delta operator on approach, but it is possible to do the same thing with a superlateral approach. Anyway, look at carefully all the video, all the, the video available on the on the booth. So now, what about the humerus? So this is what the left humerus, so totally elbow. It is a left humerus, and uh, once you dislocate the humerus, you have to do the cut. Where to cut and how to cut the humerus? Well, it is different from the anatomical prosthesis because you do not cut at the anatomical neck with 130 degrees inclination, for example. You cut with 150 or 55 degrees according to Paul Grant. And these values in the prosthesis is crucial. So the first point is what is the inclination, and you have a guide for that. The guide gives you 145 degrees of 55 degrees, sorry, of inclination. So where to enter the humerus? You enter the humerus at the junction between the cartilage and the supraspinatus insertion. So what we call the rim rent. So you start the entering point right here with this tool and you start to enter the humor. So it's a little bit difficult to show more, but okay, let me cheat a little bit. I start here. So here it's easy. This guy is very is wonderful because you have the inclination angle and you have also the retrovation guide. What does it mean? It means that you take this pin and you have the possibility to choose between 30 degrees of retrovation and 0 degrees of retrovation. Meaning that, for example, if I take here 0 degrees retrovation, this is parallel, this pin is just parallel with the forearm. And everybody recommend between 0 and 30 degrees retrovation. We did a lot of studies to compare 0, 30, 20, 10. We failed to find any correlation between 0 degrees and 30 degrees. Nevertheless, with 0 degrees retrovation, the internal rotation was a little bit better. So what we recommend is to start with 0 degrees uh, retrovation. So if this is 0 degrees retrovation, so you go on, you implant, you implant the guide, and you check. If with zero degrees retrovation, the, you are like this, it is not possible. You do not want to implant the prosthesis out of the bone, like this, for example. This is not good. So what you do in this case, you just cheat until you, uh, in, you are inside the bone. And now it's good, uh, I am inside the bone, and I will accept between 0 and 30 degrees of retrovation. So don't worry too much about that. We, did, we failed to find any correlation. There is no risk of instability. Of course, don't do it with 70 degrees retrovation. Don't do it with 0 degrees, uh, with uh, 20 degrees antivation. So that is good for the inclination, good for the retrovation. Now, uh, what about the height? How much should we cut regarding the subscale? Well, don't cut too much. The key point is to implant the prosthesis at the end. You must have, you must have the metallic part, the metallic part of the prosthesis, meaning this metallic part just above the greater tuberosity. So don't cut too much bone, otherwise you will shorten the humerus. If you shorten the humerus, you shorten the deltoid. If you shorten the deltoid, you get instability. So where do we cut? We cut just at the top, uh, like this, in order to stay above the greater tuberosity. And I cut with this inclination. Good, we start the cut, then we need to remove the nail. Of course, otherwise you cannot uh, um, uh, cut the and you complete the cut. So now the cut is done, uh, you have your retrovation, you have your inclination, and you have the height. So a question arises often time, well, what about is the greater 
reciprocity is not there anymore. It happens in case of revision of the it happens in case of post-traumatic arthritis, where you have non-union or malunion of the greater tuberosity. So, if you do not have this on the on the humerus, just do a preoperative measurement of both humerus with a scale. And you measure the length of the normal humerus, you report the length of the pathological uh, humerus, and you will know how high you must implant the, the stem above the bow. I will show you again that tumor. So once this is done, you start, you can start with a metaphysical rumor. This is a metaphysical rumor, meaning that this part is exactly the size of this part. Here, this is a metaphysis, and the metaphysical rumor is just to prepare this part for the humor. So you start like this, very easy. So you have the sobol. So with the sobol, it's always a little bit difficult. If you have a very difficult case, you can do it with. Uh, you can do it if you like with uh, power. I like to use power sometimes like that. That's fine. Maybe it's a little bit dangerous. Let's say Jean-Marie told me that it's dangerous. No, I just think that. It's less aggressive. And I don't want to stay on the floor with the uh, river. So it's usually not so difficult. That's good. You see, when you have the, ma the mark here at the level of the cut, that means that it's enough. That is what you reach, that you want to, to obtain. So that, is, was, that was a metaphysical river. Then you have that physical river, 6, 9, 12, and so on. So don't try to oversize the stem. Why? Because with a typical granule prosthesis, you do not have offset uh, between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. And it is a separate of the granule prosthesis. If you have an offset, you lateralize too much your prosthesis, you will have impingement during elevation. So you have to accept this concept of gravel, which is to medialize the diaphysis with respect to the central point here on the cupola. So that means what? That means that you cannot use a big stem uh, because otherwise you will have a fracture. So usually I implant six or nine and it's enough. So that is diaphyseal, so you can do it six, nine. So if you see that nine is tight, I would rather use six in order to avoid any problem. With cemented stem, we do not have problem of losing or whatever. So once it is done, then you have the uh, epiphyseal rim. So I repeat, three rivers, the first one for the metaphysis, second one for the diaphysis, third one for the epiphysis. This is the epiphyseal river. It's very easy, it's like a tetanus. And the goal is just to center it in order to prepare in order to prepare the river. And at that time, you choose between 36 and 42. If it is a man, big man, you can use a 42 uh, uh, epiphyseal river. If it is a lady like this, 36 is fine. In case of instability, as, as uh, pointed out uh, Mauricio, it could be a concern, but this is more in the case where you have no bitter tuberosity left. But for regular cases, just rely on the side of the epiphysis, 36 works very well. So now we have everything done. We have a good inclination, we have a good vibration, we have a correct height, and you just take the prosthesis, diaphysis 6, uh, epiphysis 36, and in, in those cases, with the correct height, I always 
use a six millimeter uh, inch, polyethylene insert. And that said, you implant it and you just impact it a little bit. Do we have the impact? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh yes. Okay. So you can try, in order to compact it, you put the retroversion you want. We decided zero degrees. So this is parallel to the forearm, and that's easy. You just impact it, and you don't try to be too low. Stay just above. And it's perfect if you are just above the bit of porosity. You won't have problem of deltoid by doing that. And it's done. The so humerus is done. Don't make it more complicated. Stay simple, respect, retrovation, inclination, and height. And it's okay. Any question? Any question regarding the humans? Moritz, no, did I answer your question? Regarding the question, what is the question here? Yes, I'm very surprised. Yes, I'm very surprised that case by case the retroversion will be changed because you're putting your guide just the hole on the top of the head. It's not the bar that says to you the pressure is the, 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 the hole over the, over the head. It's, it's easier to think about. Well, the bar will be yeah. not be too retroverted or very retroverted. Exactly. exactly. But they will be probably in between 10 to 20, everything okay, because the normal retroversion will be 20 to 30. Exactly. exactly. You don't want to implant the prosthesis out of the bone. So that means that you have to be between 0 and 40 degrees. And what I think that's very important is because when you see the books and you see the technique, you always will be out of this kind of technique if you're choosing a fixed approach. I think it's easier this way and you will have more bone because what happens is that if you always put in training, sometimes if the patient is 15 degrees better than normal, then you will cut a lot of bone, you will cut it for us. So that's so why that's a primary reason. I think it's the most important thing for us today. For me, the retroversion guide is, as you say, to avoid excessive 70 degrees of retroversion or 30 degrees of retroversion. But mainly the guide is just to tell you what you need to record it in your practice notes to say I ran it with 20 degrees of retroversion. Because you will check where, how is your ventilator, your inner component. So that's uh, the way we compare the retroversion and the range of motion and so on. But Again, just try to stay in the anatomical path and try to keep it. If you, for example, if you have to do a reverse or a post-traumatic arthritis or revision of the seat, where you have no long mark anymore, so yes, you need to have the guy to be, I would say, 20 degrees of relation. Any other question? Yes, very quick. Yes, Dr. Any indication for doing a zero degrees of retroversion to grant a prosthesis now with zero degrees for an anti-version? I'm thinking in Jay Lenoir, if you have a modern version of the Lenoir, do you plan to do that? Whatever you change the universe, even if there is a huge retroversion of the planet, solve the problem of the planet in the planet, don't try.